your town, your team, your school. Eyewitness News presents the Joe Zone High School Sports Podcast. Well, happy holidays, everyone. We're here with our uh, high school basketball podcast in the Joe Zone. And uh, with me, Joe Morelli, New Haven Register and uh, Game Time CT. He helps put together actually leads the charge of the media in uh, the state of Connecticut uh, who vote on the boys' basketball poll. The first one is out. So we're going to talk, Joe, polls. We're going to talk high school basketball in the state. And we're going to spend the next 30 minutes. I mean, the basketball season's already underway. It is. Um, you know, when we had Ken Smith in here, he talked about the football season runs so long right. that any basketball team that's got a player – and in his case, you know, Primo Spears, one of the best players in the state on the football team, right. he loses them, and he doesn't like to have to play important games the first week of the season, you know, because this, he doesn't have his players. Well, maybe that would explain why the East Catholic Windsor game, which is supposed to be Friday, December twentieth, is now being played Tuesday or whatever, January twenty eighth, which I like anyway. First of all. East Catholic and Windsor, we're going to get into it. They faced each other four times each of the last two seasons. That's incredible. They're only facing each other once this year, what? which I think is a cry. I don't why know why. That? I don't know why how the CCC does its schedule. We could do a whole podcast yeah, yeah, really. on the CCC and its scheduling. It's the only game they're playing each other, and the fact that it would have been December twentieth, the first game of the year, I think would have been a crime. Yeah, I mean you. Wa- so I'm glad it's, they moved it for whatever reason. Whoever decided. It, it's it's because t- you c- they could play that game five times. It'd be sold out every time. It's one of yeah. the best crowds of the year, one of the best environments. Obviously, you don't want to play them five times, but the point is, once I don't get, December 20th, I don't get. Um, you, and with all teams, you know, you, if you think about a lot of sports, you want that's why they have a lot of scrimmages in all their sports, so that you can feel your way around, see who your players are, who your strengths and weaknesses are. You don't want to have to do that. In and in a game that could decide playoff seating when you get right down to it. You don't want to play a game in December that decides wh- where you might be seated in March. No, but everything factors in, too. And, I mean, a lot of them are Christmas tournaments. And yep. a lot of them are non-conference games before you get in. Kind of like the college basketball. Before you get into the season, you're playing non-conference. And I've always been a big fan of the Christmas tournaments. Plus, it's during the day. You get to go. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm glad they moved it. And just like me, Hill House and Wilbur Cross, for years have been covering that game. When they play each other before Christmas, even though they play each other twice, I just don't think it's right. I think you play your rival after you get your feet under you, after you get your players back. After To play them early in the year just never made any sense to me. I realize sometimes that's how leagues do their scheduling. Yeah. They don't look at it and, hey, we got to move. You can't do that. I get it. I just don't like it personally. And like as you said, you don't either. So, they, I love the Christmas tournaments. I think all those tournaments should be teams that are playing teams they don't play. During the regular season, yeah, some, yeah, unfortunately, sometimes you play I, league matchups. Yeah, and I, I know don't, I don't care do. for it, and but uh, hey, I know scheduling's hard. It, it's hard. It is hard with these big. I mean, central, what, CCC's got what thirty something teams. It's the, it's the biggest by far in the state. It's it's very hard, and you're trying to match like schools as far as size and and the teams who don't see each other, and you don't want to have the small school playing Windsor and East Catholic because it doesn't do them any good. Nobody gets better. It doesn't do the small school any good when you're getting pounded. So I get it. I'm just, again, reiterating, I'm happy the yep. game is no not Friday. I'm glad it's January 28th. And, uh, and again, I wish there were two, one at each place. It's always... Uh, yeah, it's at Windsor this year. <laughs> this is the one I noticed. Um, I mean, I, uh, last check, I only saw Windsor with 17 games on its schedule, so maybe there's a missing a couple games, but um, listen, we know they're the... right According to well, our poll, well, let's, yeah, let's they're get- the best two teams... That may change yeah. by January 28th, but I don't think it's going to change no, for Windsor. Let, and, in fact, uh, let's get to that because uh, we've talked many times about p- p- preseason polls. They're really hard to do, and I think they're even harder in basketball than they are in football. Okay. Um, mainly because there's so many teams and so many divisions. Yes. It's, it's, it's so hard to sort through, but there are some givens. So my formula for... Picking teams. Yep. I look at who won championships last year. Start with that. How many of those players are returning yep. from those teams? At least that gives you a criteria. So if you have a team that won a championship last year and they got 
one guy, mm -hmm. two guys, mm -hmm. three guys you can lean toward. So that's how I start. And then the next criteria for me after that is I just look at teams that are always good. And until they have a season where they're not always good, I have them sure. in the mix. So um, before we get to this year's poll, so we yep. start with last year's champions. Sure. Uh, East Catholic won what I call the big boy division. Yep. Division one. Yep. Um, they're back next year, and they're going to be right in the mix. Yeah, well, yeah, East Catholic, I mean, they graduated four stars. Their only star returning is Matt Noling, and the New Haven fans will be happy because he'll be at Yale University next year. So uh, <laughs> um, it'll be a good addition to that team. He's a bright kid, and he's going to be asked to do a lot more. I mean, he's going to be bringing the ball up for the break pressure. He's going to be really on scoring and rebounding. So he's going to be a lot more is going to be expected of him. But with Luke Rally, he's got guys like Chris Jones. I think they'll be fine. I mean, I don't know if they're the second best team in the state. Yeah. That's where I rank right. them. But I, I think too. he'll be fine because yep. I think they're going to win games based on who they are and how they run their sets. And right. I think he's as he's good a bench coach as there is. Yep. So. Waterford won the championship last year. Division two. So after winning Division Three the year before, yeah, they, so. their program, yeah, their program. But they, what, a, what a great year it's been for Waterford! Just all well, around. yeah, well, they well, got all those baseball yeah. and, and uh, they with the football big winning the first playoff game and and, and and a couple other sports. Bill Bassett does they do a nice job. They run they play a style of ball that every kid would love to play. Run up and down, boom, boom, boom. I mean, it's I like that kind of style and. They took apart, beat some pretty good teams, and they beat a good New Britain team in the final last year and to end the the, uh, the weekend at Mohegan Sun. Uh, I don't know if they'll be as good this year. Yeah. I think they're going to come down a couple of notches. But in the ECC, they're favorite to prove it otherwise. And uh, they're not going to change their style of play just because they lost people. But, I mean, they're in Division Two, and uh, it won't be as easy for them. Let's put it this way. I'll be surprised if they only have one loss this year, but we'll see. Uh, Farmington, another defending champ. They had one of the great seasons in the history of that school program. That whole town rallied around them. Yeah, it was nice. Um, that was a really, really nice season for them. First state championship since, I believe, 1939 yeah. off the top of my head. Yeah, but uh, uh -huh. they lost Bue Moma with a big kid, went to prep school. Uh, it's unfortunate that's been a trend that's happening in our yeah. in this sport, and in, it's the way it is, and I understand that this kids want to go and they maximize their potential and reclassify, and that's just how it's been in this game, whether you like it or not, and I, that's, I, that, to me that just crushes them because they lost seniors and they lose him, and I think they definitely take a few steps back, and I, I don't, but, and I think they moved up a division too, so... Um, it's going to be hard for them. <laughs> yeah. New Canaan, you know, those guys down in Fairfield County, they're, you got to depend on somebody down there c coming up big somewhere. Well, you know, New Canaan, we know, hey, listen, Lou Marin, I mean, we've been covering Lou Marin early for how many years in football, the all-time winning is coach uh, in state history. Um, basketball team hadn't been to a state final in 30 years. They hadn't won one since 1962. I know a lot of people didn't like the idea they were in Division Four. Now, listen. You and I have had shows. When we did a show last year, on, nobody was even thinking about New Canaan in early January. Nobody started thinking about New Canaan until they hit a game-winning shot in the middle of the year. Oh, they're in Division Four. Well, they don't belong there. Well, nobody – see, that's why I don't have a pro – I didn't have a problem with it as much as others did because – Nobody cared about New Canaan for basketball. They haven't done a damn thing. Excuse my yeah, yeah, French. We're okay. Now they're in Division Three. Maybe they should be in Division Two. But you know what? You play this schedule and you play where they put you. And then the formula the CIAC has that's transparent, it's on their website, that's where they ended up being. Danny Melzer does a great job with his kids. They have a balanced team. They got a lot of kids back. They didn't get that many votes in the poll. I was one of the people who voted in the, in the 15. I think they'll be fine. I think they're an FCX contender. And the FCX, to me, is kind of wide open. So. And then your last defending champ, Innovation. Yeah, uh, you know, I... They came out of nowhere. Not I mean, really? they, I that mean, was a they, they, good story they, they, last well, year. Well, yeah, too. they they what had been the sixth or seventh year, and basically yep. in, in the CRAL, which nobody knows anything about except for the people close to home. But and they play a decent schedule this year. They play Amistad, who was a Division Three finalist last year. They they play a good team, and they're going to be fine. But yeah, it was a feel good story. They lost some keep kids. Uh, I'm interested to see, but now they're in Division Two, so they went from five to two. So people complain that they're in five because they shouldn't have been there. 
that's another thing. People complain that innovation, who's in their seventh year of varsity existence, was in five. Well, they hadn't done anything. So why are people complaining about Because they're not a small public school. And I get it. But the, now they're bumped up to two, which <laughs> I, get, I don't know the whole formula, but it seems like kind of a drastic jump. But you know what? It is what it is, and they'll play the schedule and see what they'll happens. They'll play, and if they get through it make the playoffs, God, they're going to be better off because yeah, they're playing absolutely. harder teams. Well, right. But in your Division two, you're going to be playing. Real, you're gonna, it's not going to be Division five. Because obviously. those Division two teams, there's a couple of them in there who, you know, if they made the big boy division a little bit bigger – there's some Division two teams that would be in there because there's well New Britain last year is one of the largest Romans yeah. in our state. They're yeah. in Division two last year based on the formula. And it a pretty is, good team. And, and, yeah, and Warford beat them. That's why I thought what Warford did was so great because Warford's is what Class M by enrollment, and they beat a t- one of the large. That's yep. and they beat some good teams. So all right, so we went through and uh, we're talking with. Uh, Joe Morelli, game time CT, putting together that poll, New Haven Register. The boys' basketball poll is out uh, on the website right now if you want to see it. Yep. Um, I had Kenny Smith in here um, a few weeks ago. In fact, right. that podcast is up right now. We talked about polls. Yes. He told me, if we're not in the top three, man, we're unhappy. I want to be there. We want to be the program that everybody's looking at. Well, they are. He's not only in the top three. They're number one. Number one in the state preseason. Again, a really, really good team last year. And they've got three kids back who are all, I'm not just contributors, but they're all good kids, all good players who would be starters probably on any other team in the state. That's a good criteria to start as the number one team in the state. Well, I think that's the reason why 19 of the 20 voted for Windsor. The only other vote went to East Catholic, which right. is understandable. Um, when you have you st- when you have two Division One guys, Corey McKeithen, who's going a rider, Primo Spears, who's undecided. Maybe he goes prep. I don't know, but he's a Division One kid. I mean, he, he, anybody who's watched him play knows he can play at that level. Uh, you start right there, and they're already better than eighty percent of the teams, if not more, because you, you, that's just that good. And you add in a transfer in Justice Allison from South Windsor, who basically was their best player, and they didn't even make the state tournament, and then. And they have some big parts and the guys will fit in and you know what Kenny Smith's going to do they're going to press no, 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 Smith. press <laughs> the guy's been on the bench he's going to he's six six wins seven wins away from 600 they're going to press they're going to run they're going to play defense they don't have the size they don't have the big guy size that um, they had last year he graduated they may not have the depth but they're the best team and it's going to take a lot to beat them you got to get them in foul trouble you're going to have to beat those two guards to beat Windsor and they lost four games last year, and East Catholic beat them, what, three times? So they only lost one other team. So who's going to beat them? Yeah. Realistically, who beats them? Hill House? They play January 8th. We'll find out. Yeah. So that takes us to East Catholic, who the defending champ, who I had my eyes on all of last year. You, voted, you were voting number one most of the year, yes. Um, I, I think you know my formula. I do the same thing with football. By right. the way, um, this poll, Game Time CT, this is the – the media poll. There's also a coach's poll out there. Um, yeah, well, it's strictly media. You know, so yeah. we're all media guys. So we so we see a lot of games. I always make fun because I go in for one quarter, leave, go to one quarter, leave, yeah. go to one. So I see a lot of games, but I don't see any games. That's the problem with doing it the way we have to do it yeah, to get that much out. Yep. But you know, again, you start with East Catholic, defending state champ yep. in, in the best division. A couple of really good players already. Yeah. Um, and they, they fall to that number two spot. Yeah, and I think that's a good place for them. I mean, again, most teams lose four starters. You don't see them in the top ten. You're maybe not even getting the vote. That's right. But they've garnered so much respect because of what they've done and been to the finals and won state championships in, in the lower divisions. And, uh, you know, to finish number one in the poll for the first time ever, I believe, last year. And, uh, again, we mentioned earlier, Luke Riley's one of the best bank coaches. They're going to be fine. They've got players. They just don't go very deep. And uh, I don't imagine they'll be very deep this year. But in the CCC, again, they're going to win 15, 16 games, maybe 17 in the regular season. Which will be good enough. Yeah, it'll be fine. And, again, it's so hard to put together the basketball pass. So it, it looked like one and two were, were, was easy. And then the, I start looking at teams like Sacred Heart. Every year, they're Sacred Heart. So until they're not there, yes. and, and it could be – Maybe week two, they're not there anymore. But right now, in a preseason poll, if Sacred Heart's not somewhere in the top ten, 
you're not following the traditional well, measure in the it, state. It's funny you say that because one voter noted to me today, emailed me, goes, Sacred Heart's not that good. I, he, vote, he voted them outside the top okay. ten. But I, what I say to him is, I don't disagree that, and I've said it in one of my things you could read, five storylines. Will Sacred Heart come back to the pack in the NBL? And the answer, I think, is yes. Okay. I think when you lose Nate Tabor and Jamal Waters and you lose uh, Omar Rowe, and they didn't bring – they don't have anybody who can replace those guys. Let's leave it like that. It's very hard to do, replicate those kind of things. So they come back to the pack. Do they? Are they the favorite? Yes. So the fact that they're third is not a surprise. Again, until somebody beats them in their league, they're going to be ranked that high. The question is, is who's going to do it? Is it going to be Crosby? Is it going to be Naruto? Is it going to be somebody else? Prove it to me that they could lose three or four games, and then they'll fall out. As that's what I told the ma- guy who, inter- who emailed me, who will remain nameless, because it's, we try to keep this, yeah, you know. Of course. And um, which is fine. I don't disagree with his thought process. I think I admire it. Um, but again, how do you find ten teams better than Sacred Heart right now? Right this moment, are there ten teams better than Sacred Heart? My answer would be no. By season's end. Maybe. Maybe it will happen. Could be by week two. That's the, ni- the nice. It th- could be. The yeah. nice thing about. The basketball poll. There's a, you know, as a football poll, you have a real short sample. You got ten games by week six or game six. You have a pretty good idea who's who. Basketball, we have our first poll. Then we're not going to vote again for what two weeks? Or yeah, I think well, I think there's a good team we're going to break this year. Usually it's right around New Year's. I think we're going to break till after the New Year. Let a couple and teams then play. then other teams play it out. Let's see. And then you're going to have a little bit different poll. But I will tell you, and we will we've discussed this off air. The final poll will have five to six teams that are in the preseason top ten and three or four that we got wrong. Right. That's just the way it is. There's no rhyme or reason to it. You know, you, you vote, vote, teams are going to vote for who they in their area. The teams are going to vote for teams that did well last year. Teams are going to vote for who they think is the best best team in their league. And, again, it's it's not easy science. I mean, like I said, football is a different animal. and But you, most of the time you get your – you have it right. Yeah. And that's all you want. I mean, Windsor's the best team. Nobody's going to tell me otherwise unless you can go and beat them. Once you get to 5, 6, 7, 8, you got teams at 11, 12, 13 that can easily move up. And some there's a team that probably didn't, they didn't get a vote in the preseason poll right. that will be there high up next week, has four or five wins, and they'll say, hey. And then now you deal with the pressure, you know, What's the easy that head that wears the crown? How how's that saying go? That we're, we're, I forget that there's no saying. I don't know how it goes, but to your point about Ken Smith, they want the pressure. Yes. Well, when you get in the top ten, you get the pressure of being there, whether you like it or not. So if you want to be recognized, deal with it. Somebody like Sacred Heart, who's been there year after year after year, teams have been trying to knock them off since Mustafa Heron showed up there in 2013. So the question is, is can they handle it? And teams like Immaculate at seven, teams like Hill House at five, they've been in that poll. They understand that that comes with the territory. Well, the other thing, too, when we're ranking teams, I gave you two of my criteria, yep. what they do last year, yep. how many players are back from that team, right. and then I go to coaches right away because the really good coaches are always – really good coaches take mediocre teams and make them better, make them good. Average coaches can have a good team and make them worse. So you, I look at coaches, and if you look at your list, I mean, you go down the list, Trinity Catholic and Notre Dame, West of Hill House. These are all programs that have leaders at the top or tradition. And tradition and coaching means a lot in basketball because in basketball you only need one player. If you have one great player, you can rally the other four guys around them. In football, you, you need you need six on each side of the ball to be really good in football. In basketball, you can do it with one. And I'm not saying you don't need three, but you can do it with one. I mean, I covered the 2002 Syracuse team with Carmelo Anthony that won the national championship. I mean, it was Carmelo and four other you know pretty good players. But I think in basketball, if you got one really good player and a good coach, you can win a lot. Well, of you gotta games. have the you gotta have the supporting cast in it. It's it, yes, you can do well, but to be great, you need more, and you have to have everybody buy into the system. I mean, Trinity Catholic, we're they're being predicted to be a leg up on everybody else in the FCX. So, based on that information and people hearing the same thing, they were in the top ten, but they were eight and thirteen last year. 
which is unheard of at Trinity Catholic, and Mike Walsh is not the head coach anymore. Now, he's back as an assistant after a year with the girls when they asked him to go help the girls program <laughs> out. Great. But to me, they have a lot to prove. Yep. I mean, Trinity Catholic, I mean, last we heard from them, realistically speaking, was when they won the division Class S State Championship of Westbrook, and them and what Sacred Heart did in the Lord. This is the reason why we have the system we have now with five divisions, based off of those things. So to me, Trinity Catholic has a lot to prove. They are a great program, have a lot of state championships, and Mike Walsh has a lot of wins. But to me, they have to prove it to themselves and to a lot of people that they're worthy of this ranking. That's the what I, I mean. Do I rank them in the top ten? Yes. But eight and thirteen well, is unheard of, wouldn't you say? Yes. For Trinity Catholic? Absolutely. So we'll at, see. Yeah, I mean, I look at the Hill House again. When somebody says Hill they're House, they're thirteen. Yeah, and they're thirteen eleven last year. Now I'm. Do I listen? I cover them more than any other team. Yeah. They've got a lot of kids back. But you know, and they and they're used to having a spotlight. They're another team that ble- plays with the spotlight. They're used to the idea come playing for titles. Come get us! They want Windsor. They got Bassick. They're used to it. those are the teams that are used to it. So, and we'll see how they do because you get they play Bassick and Windsor in the next month, among other teams. So, but that's the beauty of this. We're gonna we're gonna see some of these teams match up against yeah. each other, and you're gonna know. You're gonna know by like you said by mid January. You know. Because the top ten is pretty much all good teams. Now, last year, we had Cromwell and Wamogo. A lot of teams, they should not have belonged in there. And then they lost early in the tournament. So, But you, I, we also, as voters, sometimes we, we reward teams who have great seasons. It's hard sometimes to vote a team that has three or four or five losses ahead of a, te- a Class S team that has none. I agree. It's hard to do that. I, I get agree. that. Listen, I get it. I mean, Wamogo, I don't think I voted them in the top 10 all year, but they were in right there. They had a great season. They had a good team. They lost in the Division Three quarter. It's, 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 there's not any rhyme or reason. It's what you feel. It's like when you're voting in that final football poll. How do you? Where do you put Sheehan? Where do you put Weston versus the other teams you've been voting for all year that lost in the quarterfinals from the little higher divisions? It's a very – it's not as easy, as simple as – people think go there sit there vote for 50 and then come back and talk to us about how how easy it is to vote because it's not it would be easy if every team played every team <laughs> yeah which is never going to happen right right, I mean. right you know and in fact you mentioned the football poll i was actually surprised that bloomfield dropped out of the top 10 that surprised me because I, I think a lot of people were waiting to, i think people were waiting to do that basically they they didn't play anybody everybody said and then they get beat by 30 in the finals, and people were looking yeah, for a reason. Yeah, but it was a, a one-point game at halftime. So I'm I mean, disagreeing, but I'm, I'm, And they had to leave. So the, the question is, is when you have all these other teams that you feel need to get voted in the top ten, like, um, I don't know, whoever. Well, Weston ended up in there. They, yeah, right. They, they and, weren't uh, getting a look. Now, if you Weston and Bluefield play ten times, I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I, I saw Weston play, so they were very good. How many, how many would Weston win? How many would Bluefield I don't know. But yeah. Weston gets in. This, like, innovation last year was on the outskirts of the top ten because they won a state championship. People vote for teams that win state titles. I think there's something to be said for that. Yes, it was in Division Five. Yes, I would not have voted them, but everybody feels differently. I was going to ask you about that because I am always looking for that one team, maybe a second team, that clearly if they played the big boys every single day, right. they wouldn't have the same record. But right. I try to look for... A smaller division team, right? To re- with a perfect re- record. Reward. Do so you believe in rewarding them? Get them a little bump. Okay. You know, I, because th- we're not comparing X's and O's. Clearly, if they were playing in division, a, a team that might be undefeated in division four, if they're playing in division two, they may not be undefeated. Probably wouldn't be. But I like to recognize you can't do it with everybody. No. So I try to pick who I think the best team. Like when, I, like this year in football, Ansonia. And Bloomfield, I had them in the top ten all year, both of them. Fine, you know, but the argument anybody will crush you if you say if they well if they played you know, in well, the CCC sure. every every week they'd have five losses. Well, Shelton was the Shelton was the big sticking point in, our, in the comments well, section well, they because were so good. Oh, right, but and they lost to Cheshire, and they lost to Newtown, right? But unfortunately, that's just the way it ha- yeah. way it is, and they didn't make it in. Now, I mean, yeah, but to me, crying over that, they didn't make the playoffs. It's not anybody's voters' fault. 
Right. Should they have gotten votes more? more? Man, okay, but should they be a top ten team when you don't make the playoffs? I don't know how they could be. Not when you got how so, could you? Am you I saying they four divisions? And how, how could you be? You didn't make the playoffs. How can you be a top ten team? I don't care what division you're in. I don't care how many good teams you play. I'm sorry. I'm just – that's I'm, just the way it is. I mean, I, agree. I, I, I can't vote for a team that didn't make the postseason in the top ten. That would be – you know, I just – But football could, is the only one you can have that argument. You don't have any other sports because it's 40% rule. Right. So I understand that yep. premise. And that's why the football coaches want to have more teams in the playoffs, which – I think it's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> we can do a lot of those. So. <laughs> you could do, I'm sure you, that, that's a good debate you and Sean Patrick may have had. So uh, We're talking high school basketball, uh, the Joe's Own podcast. Uh, the first poll is out for uh, Game Time CT, New Haven Register. Joe Morelli puts it together along with the other media members. I happen to be one of the voters. And, you know, we're going to see now. The first poll is out. We're going to yeah. take a look at it. We're going to see you right. know, a lot of games. I love basketball season. I love the way it culminates at the Mohegan Sun, which I still think is the best event for high school sports in the state. That hasn't changed. And I think it's gotten better. Of course, last year, you know, when you got, you know, East Catholic and Windsor, you know, playing. Saturday night. That's a, that's probably the best event we've had for high school basketball. I can't remember one that was better than that yet. Well, the interesting thing is now now you have five divisions for girls. And yeah, they're gonna so now you're gonna, now you're going to have – an early start on Sunday. So you're going to have five and five. It's a long day. Are they going to play Friday night? No, they're not playing Friday Ooh, night. They're so playing Saturday. And because that, if you remember, they used to play Friday, Saturday. Yes. And yes. the Mohegan asked the CIAC however many years ago. Because they want that Friday night venue. They want the Friday night venue for it. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, you know who's playing that night? I was looking at Adam Sandler. No. Oh. It's March 20th. <laughs> no, I, I, I saw, I noticed on top. Yeah. Mar- Adam Sandler. Who's starring in a movie with Kevin Garnett coming out this for yep. Christmas? Yep. So it's be a very good movie, and he's got, he's getting Oscar buzz. Adam Sandler <laughs> for a serious role. Beside the point. So it's Adam Sandler, then basketball all weekend. It's a pretty good weekend. So I understand. I didn't like it. I don't like the games on Sunday. I prefer Friday Saturday, like you do. But that's the way it is. So the other thought process was doing a standalone game Monday night. Or two games, and that was next. So they're going Saturday, Sunday, five and five. So it's going to be a long day. Yeah, well, yeah, well, Saturday was always long, but now it's Sunday's going to be long. You know, now Sunday gets you know gets even longer. I always laugh because it's from here, Rocky Hill, to there. You know, it's thirty-eight minutes. So you're up, back, right, up, back, right. Up back, and it's yeah. yeah, and we never even see the second of the casino, the second floor. No, because we go in downstairs. Yeah, and yeah, people always talk about that. I, I, I wonder how many kids have ever even who've played in the tournament ever even walked upstairs and even noticed well, the casino. The there. original back when they first talked about moving from Central Connecticut, they had to find a site. The whole idea, the CIAC, I think it was the Board of Controls. The concern was they did not want to have underage kids in the casino. I don't know how you can avoid that, but so they went. The CIAC went and looked, and they showed the Mohegan people showed them how they walk in through the tunnel, and then they would never have to step foot in the casino. Never see it exactly. So that and that was the selling point. Yeah. And obviously, it's been a great marriage between the two. I mean, and it's been, I don't think anybody who's really disappointed. And people do complain because people have reason to complain about things. Yeah. To me, I, I can't see how it can't work out for the future. I mean, it's just a it's a destination place. Everybody wants to run to the sun. It's a great slogan, a great theme. That's what everybody wants to play. Everybody wants to get there. Well, if they go to ten divisions and each, no one. <laughs> please. We could, we could burn that bridge up there at the Mohegan Sun. Yeah, itself, please. We five, have, five's enough. And anything with girls, it's a whole other podcast. Every single, no, oh, every boy. single team, no, every they're filling out the brackets. So, oh. other, so f- every single division. So basically, a hundred and fifty teams are going to get in the state tournament. You're going to have teams with. Two and three wins getting in the tournament. Whereas the boys, it's still the 40% rule. Division one, they all get in because it's 24 teams or whatever it is. Um, that's a whole other story. But uh, obviously, they, they've been wanting, they're going to try and test this out with the girls. But regardless, it's five and five. It's a great weekend of basketball. And it's never going to, you can get a ticket. You never have to go, oh, I'm not going to get in. You're going to get in. 10,000 seats. You're going to get in to go watch basketball. It's, uh, and it's a good deal. It's, like, it's $10 yeah, per they, session. They split the session in half, so you can go in the morning, there you can go in the Three uh, games in the afternoon, yeah. and two at night, so it's $10. It was $10 for a single game for football. Adult, kid, $10. For this one, it's $10 for two or three games. So it's a pretty good deal. Well, we've pretty much looked, you know, we're early. We're yeah. going to go out and see some games. Yes, we are. 
Um, remember, we had this conversation that it still could be Windsor and East Catholic playing again. It could be for the championship. Uh, I, the disappointment is that they'll play. Of course, when you you know, there's always that thing when you play four times. Nobody likes to play anybody four times, especially a good team. No, because it's hard to beat them. It's hard to beat them, and you know each other so well. And there's there's not a lot of love lost between those two schools. This is not. No, uh, when you watch them play, uh, most of the time it comes down to the last possession. I, I say. Many times it comes down to the last possession. They did it in the CCC tournament final. Um, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of crazy things. I yes. Know, but, but the one thing about them, when they play during the regular season, that's why they're both so good in the playoffs because they've already played as good a game as they're going to probably play right. until they get to the final. I think somebody else is going to be there, though. I think Winters is going to be there. I think someone else is going to be there. I, Nothing, could, yeah. I mean, can East be there? Yeah, it's just going to yeah. be very hard. When you come overcome the loss of four stars and those four starters, I mean, it's going to be hard for them. Would I be surprised? No, but I think it's going to be somebody else there. I think Windsor's going to be there in the end, but I, don't, I think it's going to be someone else. Yeah, I, asked I just Ken, don't know who it is yet. I asked Ken, Ken Smith, uh, is it harder to win the first one or the next one? He says it's always harder to win the next one. Because? Kids, they get a little less anxious. They get a little less, you know, once you've done something once, you don't have that same intensity. To win it again, back to back is hard to do in sports. They're ver- but they're ver- they're motivated. No, oh, yeah, he, well, they're he, motivated he off motivated. losing, but they're motivated off losing they the fight. With this, of course, chip on their shoulder, absolutely. Oh, they think they're the underdog, that they're disrespected, that you know. They're not happy with what happened last year. They're not happy with losing these Catholics. They want to beat them. They want to beat the tar out of that team. They want to beat the tar out of every. They're gonna, they're gonna, you're gonna see you're gonna see them scoring over 100 a lot. Yeah, People are gonna, on a mission. They are on a mission, and that's a dangerous combination when you have talent and motivation. You know what they'll have to get through that 600th win because that's a, that'll be a distraction. That'll be in January. I don't know who they're playing for 600. That'll be interesting though, because um, that'll be. It was. It's going to be after Hill, the Hill House game is January 8th. It's going to be after that. Okay. So it'll be somebody in the league, and they'll they'll they'll, they'll do that, and they'll have his his celebration. Right. It's like Nick Hall Jelly's going for 700 at Crosby. <laughs> so I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a, it's a nice milestone. No, I mean it's it's good for the boy. Hey, the fact that he's been there 41 years. Kenny Smith's been there over 30. It's when we lose those guys. Well, we're losing them surely, but surely because oh, no, nobody's are, going. Nobody's going to come in and go thirty years. No, nobody's doing that anymore. You can't survive. First of all, the, you can't even survive the way uh, you, you can't. Kenny Smith has told me you can't coach the way you used to. You, there's uh, between the you can't coach the way he does. Right. No, but who's going to get away with? Oh, well, I, I mean, Kenny can yell at a guy. You can't. They're not. Nope. You can't do that at certain schools. Uh, the, the, Nothing against Kenny. Listen, he can do that, and it's worked for him. The, the prep school thing. Um, With that too. Trainers and coaches, the off-site that parents are taking their kids to is another yeah. another problem. They're not teaching kids how to play team basketball. Or he's, you know, he's talked to you about it. He talked to us about it. It's getting harder and harder to coach. I talked to the Rocky Hill. Uh, Football coach who resigned last year, uh, Mark Fritz, who's now an assistant. He didn't want to be head coach anymore because he can't. He doesn't want to deal with all the things that a head coach, coach has, has to, to do deal with. with. We all know what they. We all know what they are. Yeah. You know, and uh, so you can be an assistant coach and coach. When the legends go, it's going to be awful hard to replace legends. I don't. Can you see anybody doing thirty years no. this anymore? I said it when he, Vito Montelli retired in two thousand and twelve. He did it. He was the only coach St. Joe's ever had. He had 878 wins, which is the all-time record, and it's going to remain <laughs> yeah. as such. And, and thankfully, he's still with us. Um, but I said it then. Nobody's going half as long as 50. Nobody's going to start in 2012 and go 25 years. I just can't see it. It's, it's too. I mean, Jeff Roy just retired from Shelton after 16 years. Yeah, that's, that's a long time. He started, what, 2000, whatever year it was, and... That's a long time. 170 wins or something. For yeah, and he wants to go coach. I mean, there's too many. Ver- there's too many variables. As I said, and you got your family and your kids. So, I mean, the Bob the males from North Haven. You're, you're not. That's 1959. That's that's enjoy them, enjoy them while you can. Because it's not easy. It's not easy to do. It's not worth the time to do it. You're not making enough money. It is for the aggravation. And you guys, you, if you to to have the success that Kenny Smith has had, you have to put the time and the work in, and put in the many hours. And he's in the building, and it's a twenty four seven job. These football coaches, basketball, it's not the season doesn't end in December. It doesn't end in March. If you want to have, so you need to keep tabs on where these kids are going, who's going where. Like you said, not you're not not so much coaching. It's just 
issues happen. How are my kids going to school? If you are going in season only, you're not going to have the kind of success. It's yeah. just the way it is. They're tracking down tweets. They're tracking down facial, social media. I, if they could just coach. Just coach. Then you see some guys do the long runs because a lot of them love coaching and playing the games. But it's there's so much of all that other stuff now out there you got to deal with, and there's less coaching. And, and you need to have the support of an administration too. It just, it and they change all the time. You know, you it's might have problem. a guy on your side, and then he's gone or she's gone, and then somebody else has got to come in who may not like your style. You're too tough. You're yep. too loud. You're too this. You're it's, not it's, enough it's, that. It's, it's, listen, I, I'm not saying that some coaches should. We're not encouraging coaches to to be. However, I just I think coaching the way you have to win and be successful. What's that? Coach your kids to your style, to bring them up to be good young men and women and yes. contributors to society yes. and have gone through a really good experience yes. of playing uh, high school sports. Yeah. I think we can end it with that. Sure. Uh, we got a season ahead. I look forward to it. Uh, the podcast, uh, by the way, will uh, be where you look for all your favorite podcasts. In fact, if you're watching this one right now, you're probably already – been to your favorite place to get a podcast uh hope you enjoyed it uh you see who's with me look for him out there he'd be on the sidelines all the yeah. time yeah and uh, I'll nice and cold out today so it makes you think about basketball you know, i love when football's over I, I don't have to take a camera outside can you imagine covering bat football today uh, it's 18 degrees outside as soon as you get the wind going well, you know, the way football's going, we may be in, we may be competing with the college football playoffs the way it's going in this state. Although I think we've hit the max. I think Thanksgiving was about as long. Well, I think that that Thanksgiving football is a whole nother podcast we, too. I, as at far some point, as we're going to talk about that one because I I think eventually it's I think eventually it's going to go in its curve. I hate to say I don't I've, like I don't like it, but I think it's I've going been a to. big proponent of it. But each year, I. Somebody could give me a couple of more arguments that would take me off of having to play Well, those games. you talked, we started with the whole, the whole Kenny Smith about how he's got Primo Spears plays football. All right, so Connecticut is the latest starting date for winter sports in the entire country, December 5th for basketball. So it's very, it's understandable why these coaches, everybody's got to wait because of the one football game. The fo- football playoffs can't start earlier. I get all the arguments. I think it's eventually. The question is, is is Thanksgiving football st- strong enough on its own to remain? For It's been for a long time. Five and ten years from now, it may not be. So, And until somebody comes up with a formula that says we can still play those games and have the playoffs at the same time, and nobody's come up with that. It's yet. not going to work. because yeah. how, can, how It can't work because the game is not Sonya going to. They can't play Naga Talk on Thanksgiving because no, they're in the playoffs? It's not even that. It's if you're, if you're going to be in a play, say you're, and Sonya has a playoff game, Oh, and then you're gonna play your rival on Thanksgiving. Nobody's gonna and you and you won. You're not gonna play your guys. You're gonna. It's gonna be a JV scrimmage. Nobody's gonna play the games. The games, the games on Thanksgiving will not. Once you start the playoffs earlier, the games are not gonna matter. And if the games don't matter, they're not going to have them. This is really that. It's really that simple. The question is, is when will it happen? It's going to. Ha- it's. It will eventually happen. The question is when. It'll be. Some snowstorm where a school bus rolls over on the way to a game, and that'll be the end of that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm but just, we, we were lucky that it was it was rain this year. Yeah, it was rain. It could have been snow. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't claim to have the answers, and nobody. I don't think I, anybody. Like you said, you haven't heard a philosophy. They, they that's think worked. about it. I, I hear a lot of people critical of the system. Yeah. I don't like people who say it's wrong. You talking about things you don't. You don't Thanksgiving. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Oh. That's a bad idea. Now, I don't have a good idea how to change it, but that's a bad idea. If you want to be critical of it, give me an idea that to solve the problem. I hate people who just have a, that's a problem, but don't have answers to solve problems. Give me a thought or two. And nobody, I mean, it's a hard situation to come up with. Nobody's it is because it it's a moneymaker for a lot of schools. It's, it's, it's a big day for a lot of people. I love covering it. I think it's I great. enjoy it myself. Starting the playoffs earlier. But not expanding the playoffs, not expanding the field. That's not the answer. I mean, yeah, because look at everybody else is starting their football season earlier. Practices are earlier in the yep. season start. But that doesn't take care of Thanksgiving. Because it doesn't matter how early you start. If you're tied to when Thanksgiving is to start your playoffs, it doesn't matter how soon you exa- start your exa- season. Exa- and that's the biggest problem. I've, I'm trying to remember in Pennsylvania, which is a huge high school football state. Right. They played – some Thanksgiving Day games, but the colleges actually had more tradition than the high school. I think they just figured out if we're going to play meaningful state playoff games, we're just got to we, we can't have these traditional Thanksgiving Day games anymore. 
that's going to be the eventual. The question is, is again, I think it's going. I, I think this the way people talk. I just think eventually we're heading that direction. I just again, I don't know when. I don't know if it's right. I don't like it personally, but that's just me talking. I, there's a lot of people who want. I think want to see it go. The question is, are, are those people strong enough? Is is that going to happen? But like you said, when you start, when you have Thanksgiving on November twenty eighth, that it's not as the same as when you have it on November twenty first. Yeah, I don't think you can have it any later than the twenty eighth. So maybe no. we've seen the next year will be on the twenty sixth because of leap year. Mm-hmm. So it'll be two days early. But it's hard, but, you know. And now, if if it had snowed instead of rain on Saturday, and they postponed the game until. Don't forget, we did have a postponement in there because of snow. Remember, we remember the. the well, yes. Well, it was the the first we, round. We still kept it in the same window. Of it didn't affect the when the last game was played, but it impacted but they the moved practice this, schedules between the other. But two they games. also moved this now. Here, here's yeah. the thing: had they moved, they had to have the four days off in between. So you had the games on Wednesday, which was a good move. They yeah. did it ahead of time because I don't. I'm sure there was a lot of snow up north, yeah. Killingly and playing field. They could. They never would have had. Well, they they barely had it ready in time for the games. Okay, so you have to. You can't play Sunday. You need to have days off because of the concussion rule. The days off right. rule. So you had to have it Monday. What if? They had decided it was pouring Monday night. What if they had decided to move, make it Tuesday? So then you're going to have the games on Sunday. So, I mean, and then what if it snows again? Yeah, what if it's, you know, you, you don't know. And that's, but like you said, it wouldn't, the fact that it snowed on December 2nd, and there's nothing that could have, Thanksgiving, no, it wouldn't have mattered. It would have been affected regardless. So, again, I, like you said, we, we don't, I don't have the answer to that. I and mean, that's a whole other podcast, but, you know. I'm sure the winter basketball coaches would be very happy if they could start their practices sooner. Yeah, but, but one, because one of the things Kenny Smith says is I'm trying to get us out of here, but we're still going, is he has to spend so much time now just teaching X's and O's, and because he doesn't get the kids, the window to train is too short. Two weeks, right? Yeah, Two weeks would start. Before they start playing games. He right. doesn't have enough time to teach kids fundamentals. He's not even teaching X's and O's. He's, just, he's getting kids who aren't – ready to play, don't know some of the skills. Right. Well, and he's, So he doesn't have enough time to even teach somebody who might be really good someday, but they're starting off without the skill level because they haven't been taught yet. Kids who want to come into the program. So that's the short I think that's the biggest complaint about most coaches right. between kids going off doing their own thing with other trainers and stuff. When they get them back, they don't have enough time to teach them the fundamentals of dribbling, shooting, playing defense. All of a sudden now, we got to get ready for game one. More time is spent on game prep than fundamental prep. That's a problem. All right. Well, we're not going to solve it here, that's for sure. No. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you guys have a great holiday. And if you're seeing it after the holidays, which is likely, I hope uh, I see you out there. That's the way I say goodbye now. Yes. It used to be uh, I'm Joe Zone, that's sports. Now it's I'll see you out there. And I probably will at some point. Thanks for joining us. Look forward to the next one.